Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another Super Coach Insider podcast. My name is Swizz, here to talk all things BBL Super Coach Round One recap and Round Two team discussion. Before I get into that, as always, check us check us out on all our social media platforms, in particular YouTube and Spotify, and get in contact with us via Twitter, Super Coach Insider One Hundred or Swizz Twenty Six. All right, for my team, always bowl first. Probably should have batted first. One thousand and ninety-two last week. Uh, which leaves me 6,173 overall, which is very similar to a lot of the experts, including last year and the previous year's winner, Andrew, uh, who's in a similar position, and he said he was in a similar position last year, just got a few less rounds to do the catch-up work, but um, this is what our long-term planning uh, comes in. It's not all about the first week, but congratulations to those who did have a great first week, um, in particular the uh, weekly winner, uh, which was Ryan with 1,531. Uh, had seven uh, heat players in there uh, with Bartlett, Kuhneman, Johnson, Swepson, Walter, Munro, and Nisa. Uh, so that looks fantastic. Just isn't set up for the Adelaide and Thunder rounds compared to a, a few of us, but, you know, is $1,000 richer than many people playing. So congratulations to him. Uh, for me, you know, the, the positives there were Munro, as much as I had the VC on him leading in until I traded in Nisa, but, you know, still great to own for 190. Sutherland with the 177, uh, you know, can't be disappointed with that. And even Cooper Connolly getting 87, uh, Tom Curran with the 128. So, you know, pretty chuffed about all that. Unfortunately, a few let me down. Sam Harper, two bats, wicket keeps, and only scored a five. Uh, the only good thing is he will become a good loophole option this week. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was disappointing. And then because I loaded up on so many Renegades and their game got abandoned, um, that was unfortunate as well. A couple of the big ones. Uh, Swepson was 162 last week. Didn't have him, but well done to the 35% that did. Uh, yeah, made 30K or 32K and has a break even of minus 70 Ben Dorshus with that family tra- tragedy, uh, 157, you know, just brilliant bowling. And, uh, you yeah, know, to, to back up after that, it was just a you know, credit. Bartlett with a 156, who was somebody who I had owned in the preseason. Uh, so that was a bit frustrating watching him do so well. Berendorf bowled a brilliant over. I think it was a double wicket made him for that 108. Uh, so, yeah, there was some of the best performance there. Hilton Cartwright who's actually owned by 4.4% uh, with a nice 112, definitely benefited with Maxwell out of the team that week. So, And even Steve Smith at 4%, 96, which uh, he got his break even, actually went up 8K to 275. So if you were one of the very few that own him, very easy trade for him down to Matt Short this week. Uh, so yeah, that that's how mine looked. And yeah, as I said, a little bit disappointing, but hopefully this week's trades, and I'll put them up what I'm thinking now, and then we'll get into some uh, options around your side. So for me, uh, the the big thought is naturally the strikers because they have the double game this week, and then the stars players then become a loophole player. So Nisa comes out, so does Billings, and then there's just sort of a debate on which way I want to go, um, and I've taken out... Munro, so I've gone the three heat plays. Uh, even though Munro does have a, a break even of minus 28 and could potentially make, you know, another, well, it depends how it goes, but let's just say he could, he could make 50K over the next two weeks. <coughs> so it is a bit of food for thought, but at the same time, I do need some cash and he uh, does have a buy uh, coming up next week. So uh, I've kept Curran for now, bowled really well. Um, you know, he bowls at those death overs, also bowls in the power plays. So I, I think if I've got the option, I'd rather keep him than Munro, uh, and especially because, you know, he does not have another buy. Uh, but I have thrown around the idea of trading him and maybe bringing him in a striker, but I, I think Curran's the one I'd, I'd rather keep. Uh, and then, um, so, yeah, Short's come in, then Payne's come in. Now, we don't really know how this striker's lineup is going to go, but we'll go through their squads in a second. And the other one is... Uh, for now, it's Swepson. Now, we talked about him with his break-even. Could potentially make 50K. He could go one of th- three ways for me. So it could be stay with Swepson. Uh, looking really strongly at uh, Liam Dawson uh, from the Stars, who you know scored 73 last week. He's, uh, uh, he's 108K. 
and would give me that extra stars player for next week where that would mean I have three stars I could trade two in which would give me five for the round three and round five buys uh, they so round three and five doubles and then the renegades I could trade one extra renegade in so I'd have 10 of them and then a current as my 11th player uh, so that gives me a lot of more flexibility uh, I've also considered a thunder player as well and that would give me three but the fact I've already got two in there I don't really need the other one I could potentially look at an extra striker if say a Magneti doesn't play the first game <coughs> excuse me so yeah, there's a few options there. So he's the one that can move, and this all depends on tomorrow night's game. So this round, round two, we've got opening up is Adelaide versus the Sydney Thunder on a Tuesday night. Then we've got Perth versus Hobart, Renegades versus Brisbane on the Thursday under the roof, uh, which is probably the game I'm most likely to go to. And then the Sixers are playing Adelaide, potentially weather affected again. Fingers crossed it's not, but... There's a bit of talk that there could be some rain around that night. So we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, so we've got then the uh, the Thunder and the Strikers squad. So the Strikers have named a 15-man squad, which is a bit frustrating. Really hoping it was only going to be 14. But uh, what we know is Matt Short will open with Darcy Short. Uh, number three will be Lynn. Four Hose. Five will be Weatherald. And then what happens after that, we're not sure. So the rest of their squad is uh, Agar, or their quicks are Agar, Doggett. Um, they've got Thornton and Payne. And then they've also got the all-rounders in Baisley and Overton. And then the spinners, Magnetti and Boyce. And then they've got Khan, or Can, and he's not going to make this. I'd be very surprised if he makes the side. So let's just call it a 14-man squad there. And then uh, and Nielsen, who's the wicket keeper who I left out there, but he'll bat eight or nine. So it's just the question of, okay, who are they going to go with at six and seven? And could they potentially go both Baisley and Overton? Uh, and then does that mean, that, say, Nielsen at eight, do they go one spinner in Magneti and Boyce? And then do they go just the two quicks? Do they load up on the three quicks, which I think is the most likely thing, which would be then Agar um, you'd hope for us, I'm, I'm more hopeful, but I think Payne would be one of them, and then one of Thornton and Doggett, probably most likely Thornton, uh, which means probably one of Baisley or Overton gets left out. Uh, so there is a chance that, you know, they play Magneti and, and Boyce, but I don't think they're playing both of the spinners. So uh, my my prediction there would be Can, Boyce, and one of those quicks, probably Doggett, um, definitely, and then you, it's down to the 12, and then which way they want to go there. So... Yeah, that's, it is a tough one. It makes it really hard to do those confirm those trades yet. And then you've got the Thunder 14-man squad. So Bancroft, Davies, Gilks, Green, Hells, Hatchet, Khan, McAndrew, uh, Nicker, Turris, Ross, Solzman, uh, Sam, Sandrew, and Sanger. Um, yeah, so I think that's a little bit more straightforward for the Thunder and the help us out. These uh, extended squads are a little bit frustrating. Uh, so, yeah, the loopholes are big, and that's why I've, I've set up my team. So, Gilk's playing on tomorrow night. Uh, if he performs well, Harper stays there. If he doesn't perform well, then I can either move McDermott or Clark into that wicket-keeping position. Uh, I can also then put the emergency on Connolly and use Maxwell into the batting lineup and loophole him. I've got the ability to loophole Sanger, and that's why Liam Dawson is a thought, because if Sanger performs well um, and Maxwell comes in and then I actually need to loophole say McDermott or Connolly I can bring in Liam Dawson because Swepson's not playing until the third game so I've got a little bit of flexibility with my trades there so it's all about maximizing my points but at the same time if I can maximize my doubles in future rounds and if Sanger let's just say gets another 90 or 100 of that I don't think that's going to happen but if he was do I really need that extra double player? Probably not. So, or if Gilks was the same, if Gilks performs well, well, it's like, oh, I probably can go with only four doubles this week and look at getting an extra double in for the following round. So there is a little bit of thought around that. Uh, I did have a question regarding Matt Short. Is he required and should you maybe potentially not vice-captain him? Uh, I think just you have to have a look at his scores from last year to know this this guy was the number one player in Supercoach. It is a massive risk uh, not to um, get on him. If if you don't bring him in and you put that cash, or let's hypothetically say, if I don't get him and keep Munro, and I could potentially do that, I could keep Munro, Munro goes well, makes an extra 50k, uh, and maybe look at, say, an Agar, for example, or upgrade one of my other players. 
So let's just hypothetically say I did that. Um, you know, and then if Matt Short was the fellow, if he doesn't bowl and then if he was to, you know, make a dark in a 20, you're so far ahead of the rest of the competition. Uh, yeah, you're in a great position. And that point of difference could be huge for you, especially if the other strikers players you go for, let's just say it's a Baisley or a Payne or a Thornton or whatever, go really well, then yeah, you are massively ahead of the game. And here's a bit of a thought that I have had. The only flip side to that, Short did get score 180, 119, 102, 173, 188, and 117 last season. Um, so there's the potential not to only get hurt from not having him, but not if you're not having him as a vice captain or a captain, if you want to have any stars play as a loophole, um, yeah, you could find yourself way ahead. So it works both ways. There's risk in having him. There's risk in not having him. So uh, there's no right or wrong answer there. I do love the play that if people aren't going short, at the same time, it's there is a bit of safety in numbers there. And we saw what you got hurt last week with us. A lot of well, a lot of people going against Swepson. And, you know, safety in numbers, you pick him and you're looking good. So it becomes a balance of how many players, uh, um, how, how far do you go against the grain of everyone else. I uh, had other people ask me about, you know, picking Baisley. Again, I think he's most likely to play, but they do have these um, plenty of all-rounders in that, that middle order. And it looks like, yeah, they are going to go with with old in at five. So... Uh, do you really want somebody who potentially is batting at six or seven and maybe not bowling or not bowling a lot? Um, yeah, I, I don't like that. So I, I'm avoiding him. I think it's too much to pay. I would rather just go in with like a hose or even pay, like I don't like paying up for big, for batsmen, but Chris Lynn at that price might be even a better option uh, just because you know he's going to bat at three, but I just don't think he's going to score as well. Like, you only have to have a look at, like, Baisley had some great scores last year. Uh, just uh, 89, 40, 148, uh, 107. So, you know, but there's potential for him to go go big, and he's consistently done it. So I, I'd be surprised if they didn't use him in that, uh, or use him in that, the, the, that, that sort of role where he is coming in late making some runs and using the ball but they just seem to have more options so it just comes down to how do they choose that team um but yeah i don't mind that like i, I think it, he's probably not going to be anywhere near his own and if you do select him and he goes well 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 good on you but at the same time um yeah he's one that i think a lot of people are avoiding just because of their lineup uh, so it's just kind of a difficult one and you only have to maybe look at last week where uh, the genuine spinners, uh, so like we, we saw Swepson, we saw the genuine quicks, Ber- um, Berendorf, um, Dorcius, Curran, those guys in those roles did did quite well. But then at the same time, we had an all-rounder in Sutherland, but then Sutherland is a quick bowler who bowls, you know, he's four overs. Uh, Baisley, is it, how many overs is he really going to get? So that's, and that comes down to how Adelaide line up. Like if they pick, let's say, Payne, Agar, Thornton, and potentially, let's say, four, four, and three, so that's 11 overs. If Matt Short bowls at the top and, say, bowls two, you've got 13 overs. If they bowl, then pick a spinner in Magneti or, or Boyce, there's probably another three or four overs. So there's 14, uh, what are we up to there? Like 14 overs already. Uh, so, yeah, there's, if Overton and um, Baisley are both in, you're probably looking at two, four, or three, three there. Uh, so potentially he could still get his economy rate bonus and be really good. Potentially there, does he miss out with the ball? So it's a, it is a hard one. There's no answer until we get those final squads. Uh, so yeah, but I don't mind it. It's a point of difference. And I don't mind even the idea of rowing the vice captain on one of those bowlers. Like if they could do anywhere near what they did to the Thunder last year, where Thornton and Agar went through and, uh, yeah, again, you're going to be so far ahead of the game. It's just... It's such a big risk not going Matt Short if he was to you know, score well, especially a game at Adelaide where we know he can just tear a game apart. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where I'm thinking. And I, by the looks of it, just talking to a couple other people, yeah, there's, there's a bit of thoughts with that. There's some people looking at getting those stars or renegades and probably not as much of the stars. That's just because not only are they not playing this week, but... Um, they were pretty dreadful last week, but even a couple of those uh, renegades like Sutherland with his break even, some are trying to get him in now. Uh, so you've got the options for, for round three. I don't mind that so much. Uh, or even, you know, 
how far do your forward plan and go? Or, and I know somebody has messaged me about Ollie Davies. Uh, I really like how he plays. He's one of my favourite BBL players. Uh, and yeah, if he was to get like that, that could be a great point of difference. Like if you're, I wouldn't boost, but if if you've already got a couple of strikers there and you bring in another two to give you four, could you potentially roll the dice on Davies? He's already gone up 8K. You put the loophole on him. And if he was going well, well, great. Um, that's a yeah another bit of a point of difference and then that's one less problem you've got to worry about for round four so yeah a bit of food for thought there i wish i could have a, a bit more certain answers over that but yeah there's a little bit up in the air and the other thing is yeah before you lock in those strikers players just double check that weather in sydney because there'd be nothing worse than it changes and it serves all showers and um yeah then you then like last week where we saw the Renegades and like got hurt because they had a lot of Renegades and even the Perth players, we didn't probably get the best out of them. Um, and we probably got uh, those people who had scorches were really lucky because of how well they performed against the Stars, but really only got the one match out of them. And if that was looking like the case, well, do you really need a whole lot of Adelaide players if they're only going to play one game? Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's hard to totally plan for the future because you know we could get weather affected games we're probably less likely heading into january but you know it is you know australia and is you know melbourne and sydney and it'll rain on you know a 40 degree day it's just the way it goes here so yeah that's and hopefully uh yeah that's sort of got got you at least thinking about your sites um and we you know i'll probably be throughout on twitter you know feel free to uh not even just myself but ask any of the other experts out there we're we're pretty accommodating and asking questions and hopefully we can help uh, you guys make some ch- last minute changes. But yeah, really need to probably be on at 6.30 tomorrow um, and yeah, sh- send out some messages and that. And once those uh, sides come out and we can see if we can help with those last minute changes. All right, guys, all the best for round two. Hopefully you had a really good round one and you can build on that and we will talk to you soon. Bye.